As long as you work in business, no matter which department you're in, you'll always find yourself answering actual versus forecast questions. In HR, it could be how many people did we plan to hire and how much did we actually hire. In supply chain, what were our planned versus actual production volumes? In finance, what's our actual profit versus what we forecasted? This kind of analysis is everywhere. So in this video, I'll show you how to create a dynamic report in Excel that compares actual sales versus the budget, even when the data for actual and budget is stored in different Excel files. We'll use Power Query to combine the files, clean and transform the data, then build a powerful pivot table that highlights the variance, and finally, port the data from the pivot table into a nice looking dashboard. The best thing about this setup, it updates automatically every month with the new data. So let's get started. I'll be using two exercise files in this tutorial. One contains the actual sales data and the other contains the budget. Both the files follow the same structure. They include details like product, customer, region, sales quantities, and sales values. We'll assume that these files are updated every month, so the goal is to build a system that can refresh automatically with the latest data. If you'd like to follow along, you can download these sample files from the SkillNATO website. The link is in the description below. Our actual and budget data are stored in separate Excel files. So the first step is to bring them into one place, and we'll do that using Power Query. I'll set up a new Excel sheet. Let's call it Dashboard. We'll go to the Data tab, Get Data from File and from Excel Workbook. First, I'm going to provide the location of my Actuals file. The data is on Sheet 1, so I'm going to select that. And then I'm going to click on Transform Data. So our Actuals data set is now inside the Power Query. I will rename this query as Actuals. Next, we need to bring in the budgets data set into the Power Query as well. To do that, I'll go to the new source, file, and then Excel workbook. And this time I'm going to select the budget file, import, and the other steps will be the same. So it's again the sheet one that we need to bring in. Click on OK. So we have the budget data set as well here. I'm going to rename it as budget. Both the files are now open inside the Power Query editor. Here, we can do the cleaning and shaping of the data if needed. This data set is quite simple, so we don't need to do a lot here. Perhaps I will just delete the row ID column by pressing the delete key. And I guess we also don't need the order year. I'll do that for both the queries so that the data st stays in the same structure. Now we have both the data sets in one place, but they are still in two different tables or two different queries. For effective analysis, we will need them combined into one query, and we can achieve that by appending the actual query with the budget. But before we append, let's do an important step, that is to add a scenario column to each query. So I'll first go to the actuals, add a column, custom column. I'll call this column scenario. And for this one, I will give the value of actuals, and I will give it the data type of text. Then I'll go to the budget query and do the same step. Add a scenario column for the value instead of actual. This time I'm going to put in budget. Also assign it the data type of text. This step is important because once we combine these two tables, the scenario column will help us identify which part of the data relates to actuals and which part is budget. So once we are done with these steps, in within any of the query, I'll go to the Home tab and then go to Append Queries and Append Queries as New because I want to create a new query that combines the results of Actuals and the Budget. So I want to combine the Budget table with the Actuals and click on OK. And it will create a new query for us, which combines the results of the two queries or adds them together. And as we can see in the scenario column, we will have an identifier actuals and the budget so we can easily slice and dice the data. I'll call this new query the console 
which indicates the consolidated query. So as a result of all of these steps, we now see a single unified table with all the data and a source column or the scenario column, which tells us whether each row of data is from the actuals or the budget. The next step is to load this data into Excel. So I'm going to go to the close and load tab and I'll select close and load too. For now, we'll keep all the queries as connection only and click on OK. In the site pane on the right, we can see that all the queries have been loaded successfully. Next, we need to create a pivot table using the consolidated query. So I'm going to right click on console, load to and select pivot table report. We can load it to the existing worksheet on cell B3. Also, make sure to load it to the data model because we'll be using Power Pivot to create DAX measures. Click on OK, and there we go. Once it's loaded, I'll start building some basic pivot table. I'll drag the, I'll drag the state field into rows, scenario into columns, and the sales value into the value section. I think I can remove the grand total over here. Now this pivot table gives us nice information about actual and budget sales, but we are still missing the variance column or the difference between the two. To set that up, we'll have to create DAX measures in Power Pivot. So I'll go to my pivot table and on my console table, I'll right click and select add measure. The first measure we will create will be for the actual sales. So I'll put actual sales. Description is optional, so we can leave that. We will use the calculate function. The calculate function has two criteria, the expression and the filter. So first of all, for the expression, I will say that I want to sum the sales column. For the filter, I want to sum the sales column only for those rows where scenario is equal to actuals. So I'm going to put in scenario equal in quotation mark actuals. Now I can close it, check the DEX formula. There is no error, format it as number and click on OK. Next, I'm going to add another measure, which will be for the budget sales and it will follow more or less the same syntax. So sum of sales when scenario is equal to budget. Again, we check our formula formatted as a number and OK. The third scenario or the third measure that we need to add is the variance, which will basically be the difference of actual sales minus budget sales. Again, formatted as number, decimal number. Now you will see that in your console table, you will have these three measures which we can put in. So I can remove the sum of sales that we had put in before. I can also remove the scenario and instead I'll put actual sales, budget sales, and the variance. Now that we have our pivot table ready, let's use it to build a simple dashboard. The goal of the dashboard is to show two key insights. The top 10 states with the most favorable variances, the top 10 with the most unfavorable variances, and below that, a chart that compares actual versus budget sales by month. In this video, I won't go into the details of a step-by-step dashboard setup and formatting. If you want a detailed tutorial on building dashboards like this, I have a dedicated video. Feel free to check it out. The link is in the description. For now, I will import a pre-built wireframe of this dashboard into our pivot table file. So I'm going to go to the wireframe sheet, move over copy, and then I'm going to bring it into the file that we were working with. So here on this sheet, we have the wireframe of the dashboard, and this sheet is the one where we built our pivot table in the last section. To feed the data into our dashboard, we'll need to create a couple of copies of our pivot table and also tweak them slightly. First, in the dashboard, we need to get the list of top 10 favorable states. So for that, I'll sort this pivot table from largest to smallest. For the second section of our dashboard, we need the top 10 unfavorable states. So for that, I'm going to create a copy of this pivot table next to it. And in this one, I'm going to sort the variance column smallest to largest. 
Once this is done, we can link both of these pivot tables to the dashboard visuals. So let's go to our dashboard. In the first section, we need the top 10 performing states. The heading is wrong there, so I'll correct that. And in the second section, we need the bottom 10 performing states. So for the top 10, I'm going to link it to the first pivot table because that is sorted from highest variance to the lowest variance. It's in column B actually. And then actual budget and variance are in column C, D and E. So to shorten this up, I'm just going to copy this formula, paste it here and make the correct references. For the variance, we can put in a formula, which is variance divided by budget. Likewise, I will do the same for the bottom 10 performing states. So these are in column H, I, J, K. So Now I'm going to copy and paste the formula for rest of the rows. Next, I want to grab the data for the chart at the bottom. For this one, I will need to set up a new pivot table. So let's go to sheet one again. I'm going to copy this pivot table, paste it somewhere over here. Now from this one, I don't need the state. I just need the order month and the rest is fine. I'll sort it A to Z. And for our chart, I'm going to put in some data over here. So I'll put Jan, Feb, all the months up until December. Here I need to put actual next for the budget. I will pick up the data using VLOOKUP. And same for the budget budget it will be column number three so we have the data ready for it to go into the chart however we need to link the chart to the right data sets so I'm going to select data currently the chart is referring to this range we'll give it the correct range over here let's go back and there we go the chart has been updated as well as I mentioned earlier we now have an automated setup this means that whenever new actual or budget data is available, the dashboard will update automatically without any manual adjustments. Let me show you how that works. First, I'll open the current actuals file. As you can see, it only contains data up until August. Now I'm going to close it. I have an updated version of this file, which includes the September data as well. So I'm just going to drag it and overwrite it on top of the old file. I'll do the same for the budget as well. Just drag it and overwrite it on top of the old file. Just to ensure that the data has come in correctly, I'm going to open this file. And now you can see that we have the data for September as well. So I'm going to close this file again. Now let's go back to our dashboard. All we need to do is to go to the data tab and refresh all. And as you will see, the September data will come in automatically. In just a few steps, we have created a dynamic performance tracker that compares actual versus budget by combining different files and it refreshes every month with a single click. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe.